Welcome to Kingdom Word and Wealth. Be blessed as you enjoy the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit through God's servant, Shola Babalola, the pastor of Kingdom Pathway Church, where we are committed to raising men and women of stature who will have a vision for life, develop a mission to accomplish the vision, and be driven with the passion to follow through. Stay tuned as he shares with you the truth of God's Word. I welcome you to another edition of Kingdom One and Wealth. Shall we have a word of prayer together? Father, I pray for my listener. Let the announcing of the Holy Ghost rest upon you. Speak over you. Let your heart be open to receive the word of God. And let there be a supply of understanding. Let every question you have be answered. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For some time we have been on the series, Living a Secure Life. And it is important for us to learn this because God wants us to live a secure life in the midst of insecurity. We are living in a dangerous time now when the devil knows he's rounding off his assignment on earth and is doing everything possible to distract people and to destroy them. The Bible says that the thief comes not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. Those three activities of the devil are becoming rampant in our days. So much that people have started getting confused that will it not happen to them. And you see, as far as God is concerned, God does not want you to have that kind of experience. He doesn't want you to partake from the robbery of the devil. He doesn't want you to partake from the activities of the devil in the heart. There is always a divine exemption that he plans for you as his children. That's why it's important for you to understand how to tap into that exemption that he has made available for you. For instance, in the book of Isaiah chapter 60, the scripture says that Arise and shine for your light has come. Said the glory of God has risen upon you. It said, Behold, darkness shall cover the heart and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. That is what he has a plan for you. Upon you, his child, he will arise over. In the book of Psalms 91, it says, A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your left hand. Say it will not come near you. That is a program of God for you. It will not come near you. So when you hear people that are saying that it can happen to anybody is because they have not understood the plan of God for your life. When they understood it, they will know that it cannot happen to them because they must enjoy divine exemption. So how do you enjoy that divine exemption? How do you live the life of protection? How do you be in the state of peace? The state of nothing missing, nothing broken. How do you be in the state of structured life? When your life is well structured, that there is no breaking in or breaking out. There is no loss on any part. How do you get there? That is what this teaching is all about. And we have looked at the first factor that will always get you to that state of security, which is to stay in the blood. Today, we shall continue this teaching by looking at the second point. The second point is that explore and depend on grace. Explore and depend on grace. Grace will give you stability at every point in time because grace has the ability to keep you firmly stand. It makes you to firmly and safely stand. Let's look at the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. I read from Amplified Version. It said, Therefore, since we are justified, acquainted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God, through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed. Verse 2, we are going. It says, Through Him also we have access, we have entrance and introduction by faith. To what? We have it into disgrace. Did you see that? Don't forget the first one we looked at is the concept of faith. We have looked at faith in the blood. Now, now we are looking at how grace helps us to be stabilized. Now, he said we have access into grace. What does that grace do for us? He said to the grace in which we firmly and safely stand. So it is in grace that we are firmly stand. It is in grace that we are stable. Our stability is in the grace of God. Our stability is in the perfect work of redemption that Jesus had done for us when he died on the cross and he rose again. So our stability is in that finished work of the cross. It's not a morning, it's not in the system of this world, it is in the grace that he makes available for us. And we must always live in the consciousness of that. Now, why do I know that grace is will keep me safe and keep me firm. One, grace supplies power and it supplies strength. When you have the combination of power and you have the combination of strength, then you are going to start. That is very important. Let's look at the book of Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. The Amplified Version says, But it said to me, My grace 
by favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully now that tells me that there are some certain troubles that come on our way that as far as we are concerned as human beings we will not be able to handle but grace makes us to undo it that many of us that you are trying to solve our problem by our brain instead of solving the problem by grace he has made available for us for instance look at when jesus was in the boat i've given that example but i have to keep giving it because it's such a very important perspective you must have to life jesus was in the boat and the storm was raging and everybody they have started solving problem by their mind peter had started engaging his mind he was an expert in fisheries he has started engaging his mind andrew has been there and they have been looking at how they escaped it in just years and how they can escape it again and stuff like that but lo and behold brain is not working again their mind cannot prefer solution to it but jesus was still sleeping how did he do that jesus the bible says that he was full of grace and he said of his fullness we have received grace for grace he was full of grace he has stability and they came to him and said don't you care that we die here that was when he now spoke he spoke the word of grace and everything was settled and we must learn how to depend on that grace to live our life at every point in time grace will give you that strength and look at this scripture let's continue the verse he said for my strength and power are made perfect and show themselves most effective in your weakness that is what grace does grace will supply strength it will supply power there are some certain things that if you don't exercise your power and dominion over you will not be stable there are some people they don't want you to stay long in the place of your work you must exercise your power and authority over them in the name of jesus for you to get rid of them and have your stability but above all you need strength in the hinama it takes strength to wait it doesn't take power to wait i hope you can understand what i'm talking about you will need strength to wait in a spot after power had left strength will continue and you must learn how to balance these two together very very important the second thing is that grace is our heart stabilizer grace stabilizes our heart hebrews chapter 13 verse 9 the bible says do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines for it is good that the heart be established by grace not with foods which have not profited those who have occupied with them many times when we are weak we say let me just eat if i eat i will have strength but the truth is this when it comes to some critical use of life you don't need food to resist you actually need the grace to exist you see, you can be eating to live and you can be living to eat. You must learn how to balance the two together. God has not called you to live to eat. Eat to live, but don't live to eat. People that live to eat, they live for today. So you need grace to stabilize your heart. If you look at what happened, the Bible said that the heart of men feeling them, they are going to quit faith very soon. If your heart will not fail you, you need that grace to be so into your spirit man so many things are happening that are making people to doubt jesus they have seen pastor that they die without being healed and stops like that they die with a sickness so many things are happening and people are questioning stuff in their heart that okay if this man can be this genuine and this thing happened to him will it not happen to me you need the grace to stabilize your heart in a time like that god has not called us into the life of bed of roses i don't say life will be a bed of roses but the truth he has promised us is that we are overcomers by his Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the fourth thing that grace does for us is that grace is an antidote to works. Grace is an antidote to works. When you understand the concept of grace, you will detest works. You will not depend on your work. It is grace that makes supernatural happen to us. And if supernatural happening is not our experiences every day, forget about it. Our life will be ordinary and nobody will be attracted to our life. So it's very important for us to understand that. Look at the scripture. The Bible says that it is good that your heart be established. And it says that if grace is grace, then work must be condemned. Thank God I can go to my place of work and work, but I must always depend on grace at every point in time. We're going to have a break now. And when we are back, we're going to look at how we can live securely by grace. Whoa! 
Praise God. I welcome you back. We've been looking at how grace helps us to be secured in life. Now, how do you live securely by grace? One, live by grace. Always set your mind on the fact that whatever thing you are opportune to do or to be in life, is by the grace of God. That's very important. You see, many people pray for grace, but when things happen to them, they do not ascribe what had happened to them to grace. So eventually, they think in their mind, in their subconscious mind, that they have done it by themselves. And that is a wrong mind. You must have the mindset that it is by the grace of God that you are doing something. In fact, Paul says something in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. He said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. Did you see that in your Bible? He said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You must always have that mindset that it is the grace that makes you to be who you are. When you have that understanding, you will not be high-minded. You will always stay tuned with the Father. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The second point, cultivate the habit of asking and receiving grace on every single step or every single issue that comes your way. That is an heart of total dependence on the Holy Spirit which pulls grace upon your life. That is very important. Always acknowledge, Lord, I need you. I need your grace to do this. Even if you know how to do it, if you know 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, always trust in the Lord. Help me to solve this 2 plus 2. When you start depending on Him on those little, little things, it will be easier for you to depend on Him on great things. And with that, You'll be able to depend on the Holy Spirit that will help you draw more of those grace. That is very important. And lastly, the fourth point, do not give credit to works. It suspends grace. When you give credit to works, grace will be suspended. Oh, it took me three years to save before I can build this house. You are giving credit to work and thereby you are suspending grace in your life. Oh, before I could pass that exam, I needed to read continuously for 24 hours. You are giving credit to work. Oh, my marriage is working because my husband loves me very well. You are giving credit to work. Always learn to depend on grace. I hope you are blessed with this word. The next time we meet, we're going to look at the third point that will help you to live a secure life. This way we do. Shall we have a word of prayer together? Father, I pray for my list. Pray for you. The hand of God is upon you. Pray for you. Grace, grace, grace to be made sufficient for you. You will not live on in vain. Let grace take over every effort in your life. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Till another time we are going to meet on this same line. Go and win with Jesus.